In this video, we're going to take a look at software simulation in the all-new Adobe Captivate. There is nothing more Adobe Captivate than software simulation. In fact, Adobe Captivate, before it was Adobe Captivate, was called RoboDemo, and its primary function was to record shockwave flash demos of software on your PC for use in training and other purposes. So it's really a cornerstone feature for Adobe Captivate. Let's take a look at the all new Adobe Captivate and how it handles software simulation. If this is the first time you're opening up Adobe Captivate, as you can see here, I'm getting the one time welcome to Adobe Captivate because I actually reset my preferences. But let's just go ahead and click on new project. And if I wish to record a new software simulation, I just click on this capture icon in my toolbar and select record a new software simulation. There might be additional features here in the future, but just shortly after the release of Adobe Captivate, software simulation is the only screen recording capabilities that the tool has. When I do that, you're going to see this window here. Now, a couple of things to explain what's going on. You've got icons across the top. There are these three different types of capture types that you can use and a preferences window. First thing I'm going to do is go into the preferences window because I'd like to make a few changes. Uh, obviously, most of these are going to be your default settings. So typically for me, I'm going to use English as my caption language. The audio that I am going to record when, it, when I do record will probably be my Insta360 link webcam. I typically do not record narration as I perform the script of all the steps in my simulation. So I'm going to leave that unselected. Um, you can record system audio if the application certainly uses audio. Since most don't, though, you might want to leave that unchecked. And we're also going to create camera sounds, keystrokes, and keyboard tap sounds as we make the recording. I find it useful to know when I've successfully captured a screen. You can, of course, hide the recording window, the system tray icon, and the taskbar icon. So if you want to disguise the fact that you're using Adobe Captivate to capture software simulations, then you can leave these selected if you wish. I'm not concerned about that, so I'm going to leave them unselected. The one thing that you're definitely going to want to do, though, is move new windows inside the recording area. So let's say, for example, I opened up a preferences window from an application. I don't want it to show up on another monitor or a different spot that isn't going to get captured by my simulation. So this is definitely a good feature to have. Down here at the bottom, we want to, of course, smooth out the appearance of uh, full motion recordings as much as possible. So if you're clicking on something and dragging it, or if you're using your mouse wheel to scroll down on a page, we want that movement to be nice and clean. The second area here is for your keyboard shortcuts. I generally leave this the same. I'm not too concerned about changing these, but if you have a conflict with another application that you use, certainly you can override those and make your own choices here. Now, over in modes, this is definitely something I'm going to uh, work with here. I'm going to modify this. Now, there are three different types of software simulation. There is the demo, where the virtual artificial <laughs> instructor, if you will, is teaching your learners the step-by-step -step instructions on what it is that they need to know. Uh, they, this is completely uninteractive. They just sit back and watch uh, a tutorial that explains how things work. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's going to create uh, typing text simulations and mouse click simulations. And you can modify those a little bit. But for the most part, it's going to be pretty static and you won't really have a lot uh, to give your learners to do. The other two types are assessment and training. And you can set up defaults for both of these. Mostly I do training because I personally think that assessments, I don't need to, you know, assign a score to someone's ability to use Microsoft Word. Instead, I just want to give them practice time. 
And that's what a training is in this case here. I'm going to go to training now. And I'm going to do one thing that I want to change. I want to add comment boxes. I want to provide my instructions on screen. This is not on by default, but you can select that. All the other settings I'm okay with. I will let you explore those on your own. I don't want to make this video too long, but you know, suffice it to say, if you don't like the way Adobe Captivate works by default, this is where you can typically change those software simulation settings. I'm going to press save here to lock in my change. And now we're going to talk about these three options here. The first option allows you to record full screen. So if I've got a single monitor here, or if I have a dual monitor situation, I can select which monitor I'm going to use. In this case, I just have the one right now. So that's the default there. And it's going to record full screen. I can override any of these defaults down here to uh, just before I start my recording. My preferred way to record a software simulation is to use the application window option. This is cool because I can say, okay, I'm going to record a tutorial using Microsoft Word. So I'm going to select that first. It's going to uh, maximize or open up my uh, Microsoft Word application where I'm going to be teaching a particular procedure. And I can do one of several things. I can either select um, one of the preset resolutions and aspect ratios, or I can um, select an application region. So for example, I would use this if I was showing someone a web page and I didn't want to show them which browser I'm using. So I could just show the content within the browser itself. In this example, I want to show Microsoft Word, but I have in mind that this project file will be 1470 by 900. Maybe it's because all my other e-learning projects are that size. Maybe it's a prerequisite of my LMS, whatever. So I'm going to choose custom and type in 1470 by 900 and then click the checkbox. And this is going to resize Word to fit that and automatically configure my recording window for that particular size. So you'll see the selection handles around here have configured to that size and I'm pretty much good to go. Again, I can override the defaults by choosing uh, narration or no narration. Narration would be a selection of which microphone you're using. And I could also record system audio. Again, for Microsoft Word, I don't think that's going to be a big deal. Typically, I turn off panning, especially if I've chosen this particular mode here, and I'm pretty much ready to record. I will mention that this last size, custom size, allows you to select a size, and then you would have to manually move anything into that window. So I'm not a big fan of that. You can see why I would prefer application window and then having my application snap to that window. But we're good to record here. Okay, so now in this example, I'm going to select the simulation type. Uh, in this case, like I said, I prefer the training software simulation type because you can combine instruction with some activities for your learners to perform. So let's go ahead and capture the steps on how to translate this document and uh, we'll turn that into a software simulation. So I'm going to go ahead and hit record. I get my countdown, three, two, one, and now I simply follow the script of my storyboard to select which options that I want the learners to perform. And it will capture the screen. It will capture Microsoft Word as a screenshot, and it will remember where I clicked and build a simulation based on that. So the first thing I want learners to do is click on the review tab. Now you'll hear that little snapshot sound to let you know that it has captured that action. Next, I'm going to click on translate. I'm going to choose translate document. Now this may seem redundant, but you know, certain users uh, may not quite understand what's already selected. What's already selected is the actions that I wish to perform. But I think being redundant here is beneficial to your training because it will build that muscle memory of 
selecting from what language to what language. So I'm going to click on this drop down arrow here, select auto detect again, click on this drop down arrow, select French Canada again, and now I'm going to press the translate button. Now this procedure actually opens another instance of Microsoft Word. So as you can see, it snaps right into the recording window. It almost looks like it's the same item here. So I'm done now. This is just a micro lesson on how to translate documents in Microsoft Word. So I can press the end key on my keyboard and we'll return to Adobe Captivate with our untitled project here. There was a slide uh, here earlier. Uh, the nice thing about software simulation is that you can add standard slides to it. So for example, I could go to my assets window and I could find, you know, a nice little introduction slide that I could insert into my project. And this could be the welcome slide for this particular e-learning course here. So let's close that there. And uh, it's probably put that at the end, but we'll just move that up to the top here. And I'll delete this extraneous extra slide here. Now, in this case here, the next step for me is to import in the audio that I wish to use for each of these slides. Each slide is one step in that script process. And I'm going to do some other things to refine it as well. So the easiest way to do this is to simply go to your audio icon on your toolbar next to the properties inspector and we'll import audio and I've got them all labeled as slide one. Technically this is slide two, but that's okay. And we'll just import all of these one by one. Now, sometimes you might see this warning message. I don't even know why they don't just automatically do this for you. I can't think of a time when you wouldn't want to extend the uh, timeline to accommodate the audio that you're adding to it. So I'm going to select uh, extend time. And actually slide 11 or what was previously slide 10 is uh, also extraneous. It's an extra capture that was done. So we're pretty much good here. I just need to some I just need some audio for this and you could customize uh, this slide to to do whatever it is that you need to do. But let's go here and take a look at the timeline. So pretty straightforward. You can see there's the audio. If I wish I could add closed captions at this point, which, you know, if you want to see how that procedure is done, I have a video on that already that you can watch. But at this point, all I really need to do is kind of edit the slides a little bit. So let's uh, let's take care of that here. The first thing I might do is reposition these comment boxes. Uh, select the review tab. I'm going to place that down here so it doesn't block that. And then here's my click box. You know, if you take a close look there and let's zoom in a little bit so you can see that up close, the click box can be resized. So if you find that, you know, users are having trouble clicking the size of the click box, you can resize it. Click boxes, think of them like transparent buttons. You won't see them as a learner, but you know, you and I will see them as we work on our project. Now with those selected, if you go to the visual properties, you'll notice that you've got an option called captions. If I go ahead and show this, I'm now going to see the additional caption. So if I tell learners to go ahead and click the review tab and they click somewhere else, they're going to see this failure message here. And you can reposition those as well. So you could place that here and obviously edit the text to say something like try again if you're giving multiple attempts or just simply incorrect if that's what you want. The other um, caption that's available for you is a hint caption. So if your mouse is moving all over the screen and you're having trouble finding the review tab, you can provide a hint like the review tab is located between mailings and view. So, you know, for those that are having a hard time finding it, that might be the hint caption that they see. And of course, once you're there, you can hide that uh, caption as well. 
You can also decide on what position these are located on. But like I said, you can find their own position there. And then I simply repeat those that process of selecting each of these objects, finding new positions for them, taking the click box and making sure it's large enough for your learners to definitely press. We don't want them to struggle with this. We want it to be nice and natural. And again, you know, watch out for where those captions appear. I find that sometimes, you know, having them positioned too close to the object uh, can be a little bit confusing for your learners as well. Let's do a quick preview here and see how this, this looks. Select the translate option. Okay, so I can click translate. Select the translate document icon. In the translator panel, select what language you wish to translate from. I have selected auto detect. Select auto select. Select the language you wish to translate to. Select French Canadian. Press the translate button. To deal with responsive design, I should point out that um, when you are in responsive design, you do have the ability to move the view around and see that desktop view from any size. So if I was looking at this on my mobile phone, you know, I might have to do some scrolling and side paneling to do this. Congratulations. You should now have a French Canadian version of the original document. But everything works as you would expect it to. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.